Absolutely. I'm Dr. Andre Stanbury, and I'm a optometrist here at the University Eye Center at the SUNY College of um, Optometry in New York. You know, throughout my life, there's always been eye conditions in my family. I mean, my grandmother went blind from glaucoma. Her siblings also did. So having eye conditions is always something that's in the background of my, um, of my mind, knowing that people can go blind from these conditions. Now, as a child, I always wanted to be a, a doctor. That's something that was ingrained in me. Um, and as I went through, merging both didn't really come until I was in late undergraduate, um, my, my late undergraduate studies. So hearing from uh, someone from here, the SUNY College of Optometry, who told, who spoke about optometry, what it entailed, um, what the career choice meant, uh, was what kind of melded both worlds of knowing about eye conditions and then wanting to uh, be a doctor that can actually um, enact some change within, uh, within them. Yeah, no, I just work in the primary care and the, the ocular disease service. In the primary care service, we see a variety of patients who come in um, with various conditions. In the ocular disease service, I work specifically with, with patients who are either glaucoma patients or who are glaucoma suspects. Yeah, glaucoma is really a disease of the optic nerve. Um, the optic nerve communicates between the eye and the brain. Um, in, some, in some patients, um, the nerve starts to die. Now, there's a correlation with high pressures in the eye that causes that nerve to die. Um, in some patients, that's not the case. It's really not well understood, but the way we treat it is by lowering the pressure in the eye to preserve the optic nerve and preserve vision. Thankfully, it's a slowly progressive disease, but unfortunately, it's asymptomatic, so it takes a lot of care on our part to make sure we're accurately diagnosing the condition and also um, to follow up with um, routine treatment as well. Well, you know, I think you can be successful with, with various characteristics, but I think one that you should have entering any field in healthcare is uh, compassion. I mean, we have to think about that you're not treating just a disease entity, but you're really treating a person. Uh, so think about the person, what their lifestyle may be like, um, how you can really get to know that person and better educate them about the condition that you're treating and also um, allow them to feel comfortable so they return to see you for various follow-ups and, and you can better discuss treatment options with them as well. Well, I like, I like coming to work. I like uh, the fact of somebody saying, you really helped me or um, simple, a simple thing as prescribing a pair of glasses for somebody who may have had reduced vision before um, can be a, a really uh, exciting thing for me um, because you're allowing somebody who's never really seen clearly to, to allow them to see. Um, also preserving someone's vision. Otherwise, you know, you know that you've helped someone and without you, that person would have otherwise lost, um, lost usable vision. It's pretty exciting. Well, I think, I think really one is, is really having knowledge of what the profession is. Um, I think uh, for somebody to really want to do this, you have to understand what it is. So do your research beforehand. It's important to really look up information about the profession, um, see which areas of the profession may excite you. Um, but also having, a, having an idea that you want to work with people is very important. You really, it's important to be a people person because you're working, you're seeing several people per day. You're seeing tens of, of people per day. So it's important to be able to communicate with people well and enjoy working with people. So I think that helped me a lot. Um, in the application process. I think my need or my um, desire to work with and help people was an important attribute. Well, once I heard, once I learned more about the profession from the person who introduced me to optometry, you know, I, I uh, shadowed on optometrists for, for several months. Uh, I did research online. Um, I went to my local optometrist, had my eyes examined. Um, and, and, you know, speaking to people who were graduates of optometry schools as well, or people who were in optometry school as well, to figure out what the process was, what it's like to be a student, what's expected of you, um, how long the process is, um, better ways to prepare while you're there. So those are the kind of things I did. Yeah, maintaining a good GPA was, um, you know, it's really about developing good habits. And I think from, from, the, from you hit the ground in your first year of undergraduate, your undergraduate studies, I think it's important to develop um, good study habits, um, such as reviewing your notes, maybe weekly, daily, however you feel comfortable. Um, but just preparing yourself mentally that, you know, this is something that you're going to, these are skills you're going to develop for not just undergraduate studies or optometry school, but throughout your life. I mean, preparation and studying is something that's really never going to end. If you become an optometrist, you're constantly reviewing information, constantly staying current. So I think same, similarly, once you start in your undergraduate career, paying close attention to reviewing your notes, um, keeping up with the new information that you're given in class, preparing before class, things that are important as well. You know, for the OATs, um, a, lot of it, a lot of preparation I did uh, was from my class notes. I'm going back through organic chemistry, going through biochemistry. Did use review books as well as a guide, um, but also went into more detail with the notes I had. I felt that was very helpful um, because some of the review books lacked, at that time, 
um, some of the key um, some of the key information that I, that I would have liked. So looking through my class notes, um, which was exhaustive, um, through organic chemistry, biochemistry, general biology, general chemistry, and so forth, was very important um, to to allow me to do to do well on the OTs. Yeah, you know, the interview day was, I have to be honest, was, was kind of nerve-wracking. Um, any interview process where, where you're going to be selected or maybe not selected for, for a position or, or a spot is going to be somewhat nerve-wracking. I prepared quite a bit for it. Um, I had a friend who was involved in admissions at a, at a university, uh, so we sat down, we went over possible questions, different scenarios, um, and really I thought about what my, my impetus was for entering the profession. And I think having a good sense of that, it made it easier to answer uh, many of the questions that came up. As um, soon as we got in the exam room, uh, we had a number of different interviewers, and um, uh, once, we get, once we got going, everything was fine. But I think getting in and the initial starting up was very, was very nerve-wracking. But all's well that ends well. So. <laughs> I had uh, various choices in front of me um, uh, when, when I considered optometry. I think optometry is a great profession. I think it offers you um, a lot of flexibility in, in areas to work. Um, uh, different types of uh, practice you want to get into, whether it's pediatrics, geriatrics, ocular disease, working with contact lenses. Um, there's so many different avenues that you can work that I think it's, it's really a great profession. It's one that's growing. And I think if you choose optometry, I don't think you'd regret it either.